Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's defense. Uh, I apologize that you're probably all doing this in English for my benefit. I, I, I feel a total um, cultural imperialist, um, but all I can do is apologize for, for that. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's, it's a delight now to, at least for, for us, perhaps less so for the, <laughs> the candidate, to, to hear this defense. Um, the topic of the, the thesis, I'm sure you, you, you know, but it's the musical dimension of Chinese traditional theater and analysis from computer-aided musicology. Um, and our, our candidate, <coughs> Rafael Caro-Repetto, is, is ready to, to defend himself. Uh, before he does so, though, I'd just like to introduce the, the, the panel here so that you know who we are. I'm, I'm Jonathan Stock from University College Cork, and I'm accompanied by Alicia Relinque Eleta. And apologies if I've destroyed your name. <laughs> 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 it, it won't be the first act of destruction, I'm sure. Um, from, from the University of, of Granada, and Agustin Martel Dominguez, uh, who, who is, of course, from your own university and is a colleague of yours. Um, the, the floor is yours, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you to the jury members for accepting reading my, my thesis and for the effort of being here today for this defense. Um, <clears throat> before starting the, the defense properly, I would like to uh, highlight the fact that this research has been done in collaboration between two departments, the Humanities Department and the in, in Communication and Information Technologies Department, uh, specifically in the Music Technology Group, and has been a very fruitful collaboration, and that had an impact in the, in the methodology also, which uh, places itself in the intersection with, with humanities fields like scenology or, or musicology and also from um, the information technology side from music technology. And this has been possible thanks to the um, uh, collaboration of my two supervisors that I would like to <coughs> congratulate them and thank them for making this, this possible, um, of course, uh, because of the funding of the uh, European Research Council through the Community Project. And in the Thank, uh, thanking chapter. I would like to take some time just to thank uh, my two mates in this road in researching Tintu, Gonrong, and, and Tansro, and also to my mentors in, in, in technology field that I was completely uh, new of and had been guiding me. That. Also to the, um, the whole MTG community that have welcomed me, embraced me, and been, and been very welcome here. Of course, to my, my teacher at the artists in, in China for sharing with me their art and, and their knowledge. And um, of course, to all my friends and colleagues that have been supporting me, and the blog that I went for, which is uh, my family. So, <laughs> so let's go. Um, the thesis is, uh, as you can see for the title, is an approach to the musical dimension of Chinese traditional theater, and specifically, specifically uh, to Jingyu, uh, through this novel methodology, through uh, computer aided musicology. So, the result of my thesis is explained in this, uh, the, the eight chapters of the thesis, but for this presentation, I won't go uh, chronologically through all these chapters, but I would like to defend the reasons that I took for, for making the decisions that I made through the thesis. And because of that, I, I structured this presentation into these five sections. So the first one, I will do the motivation and explain the decision I make generally for the whole thesis. Then I will focus in, in the three main chapters of the thesis with the chapters five, six, seven, uh, respectively the Chinchu music corpus, the relationship between tones and melody, and the comparative analysis. And then I will finish with some uh, conclusions. So, the, to start with the motivation on the decisions I made for this testing, all this project started <coughs> long way ago. I, I, I am embarking in, in this PhD project. And it, it goes back to the, my first encounter with Tintu Life, um, in, I think in, in 2007 or 8 in, in, in Peking University when I was studying Chinese. I went to the theater there to, I, and, and I attended first live uh, a Tintu performance. I don't remember the play uh, exactly, but uh, in my mind, would something uh, like this.
in the interest of time, I will uh, stop it here. So um, this was, uh, by the way, um, uh, a short uh, clip from the, this uh, classical uh, play by Melan Pang, Shen Su Hen. And in fact, this, this video is, is taken from a project that uh, was carried out in the National Academy of Chinese Theatre Arts, uh, led by Chan Jing uh, Lao Shi, which is the, also the, the, act, the main actress. And the project was to make an iPhone app that my, my colleague Kong Rong crafted beautifully for helping people uh, to learn how to sing and perform this, this area, and in a project in which I participated uh, briefly. Um, so my first reaction uh, when, I present, when I attended this uh, performance in Peking was a frustration. I couldn't make sense of anything that was going on on the stage. I couldn't understand the clothes, the makeup, the movement on the stage. I couldn't understand that mass of sound from the percussion, these very strange timbres to me from the instrumental. Um, above all, I couldn't make sense of the singing. It was completely uh, frustrating to me. And in my frustration, I just look around and saw people from the audience emotionally crying. And I was so surprised by that different reaction from the same uh, performance that I, 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 it urged me the need to go deeper and try to understand how this music works. So my first reaction was uh, naturally going to the literature. I, I just highlighted here some few titles of the, the, the ones I've been reading. Uh, of course, first went to the uh, literature in, in Western languages, uh, uh, but most of the, of the research was done in, in, in Chinese sources, and that, for that came very, very handy, my, my background in, in Chinese studies. Um, most of this literature is descriptive. There is some uh, few exceptions, like Sean Felder's book and, and also Chang Yunqing. And they describe what uh, it is the uh, Qingqi musical system that I learned from, from these readings. So, as it is described in the, in the literature review, um, the, the music in Jinju is based uh, first on, um, on the couplet, on, on the lyrics. This is the basic unit of the lyrics. It's, it's, it's a line of, it's a, it's a, a pair of two lines, uh, uh, an opening line, Shanju, and closing line, Xiaju. And this uh, couplet of lyrics establishes the basic structure upon which the, 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 the music is built. So the first element of the system is the Shen Chan, which provides a basic uh, melodic outline um, according to the uh, overall emotional atmosphere of, of the play. Then the Pan Shi further uh, defines the rhythmic aspect of, of this uh, melody outline, given by providing some tempo and some meter, uh, according to the specific expressive needs of, of the uh, concrete lyrics. Um, then the role type will further specify some uh, melodic trends like the pitch range, also some uh, stylistic uh, features. And then there are many other factors that affect the final shape, uh, among them the linguistic tones, which is agreed um, across literature that has a direct impact in the melody. And from that, the result is, uh, with the result of the, all these elements comes a specific performance. This is in fact a, a pitch track from this recording of the, of the lyrics we saw previously. Okay, so uh, I understood this to make a lot of sense, but when I went to go deeper to each of these different elements, the one for which uh, I didn't find a satisfactory enough presentation, the one that was less clear for me, was the concept of Shen Chang. So when the chance came to do a PhD research, I thought that that was the topic I wanted to address, to understand how this element works within the system of uh, Qingqi music. And um, once I planned to do this, this research, how to get there, uh, the first realization was that uh, uh, Shenzhen is part of the inner structure of the music. So what we receive from the melodic surface can be just the, the sound melody or its reflection in annotated, in annotated uh, score. But I wanted to get there from, from this melodic surface being conscious that this is uh, uh, an inner structure. So um, in order to do that, where I started my PhD, uh, it came to my mind a very influential uh, book which is uh, Bell Jung's analysis of uh, Cantonese Suetu, where he applies this method of comparative analysis. And in fact, that, 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 that has been a method that has been encountered during my, my studies in musicology, like uh, the very seminal uh, work by uh, Leo Treitler's in a uh, study of uh, European plain chant, or also uh, John Blackin's study of, of Penda songs, and, and many others. Uh, yes. So I, I, I realized that there was a very established, well established method that I wanted to, to follow for my research. So once I started my PhD, and since I have a background in ethnomusicology, uh, I wanted to, um, to also uh, <coughs> support my findings with some uh, fieldwork experience uh, by learning through uh, with uh, the artists and the performers themselves. So I had the chance to, to go uh, so many times to the National Academy of Chinese Theatre Arts in, in Beijing. Um, uh, in, in two of these states that were a bit longer in, uh, 
four months in 2014 and six months in 2016. I did some, some field work. Uh, in the first uh, stay, uh, I did the, the classical uh, participant observation and, and tried to learn from the artist of how to perform some basic stuff uh, by learning some singing, some tinku playing, some, some drumming. Um, in the second stay, um, because of the very poor results artistically, speaking of this first experience, I, I tried to learn from the composers. And this is my first ever exercise of composing a Tinju aria. Uh, the blue lines are my exercise, all the red is the corrections <laughs> from, from the composer. OK, uh, just by being there in the school, I had the chance to uh, attend uh, a lot of uh, rehearsals uh, and share classes. And I went, even go, went to the high school and see how this music is taught. Um, what I learned from the experience is that uh, the main uh, uh, teaching method is a cultural singing show, the learning by imitation by orally uh, transmission. Um, and there is no explicit or theoretically uh, 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 definition of the shenxian or use of a specific use of the concept of shenxian, uh, even for the composers. But I also learned that the lyrics and, and the syllable is an essential concept in this music. And, and I took that for my further analysis later. So I've been talking of this chance, I ha uh, all, 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 all what I did when I got the chance to do a PhD. And this chance came when I luckily joined the community project that was carried here in the UPF led by uh, Dr. Serra. Um, it is a project for which Hussein is uh, the computational models of, for the discovery of the world's music. Um, although it's very multidisciplinary, the main field is music information retrieval. Uh, the two main characteristics of this uh, project is uh, a data-driven approach. So the goal is uh, starting from, um, from data that could be audio recordings, but also metadata or text uh, data. Apply some uh, computational techniques in order to extract some musical information. And also very important to, to apply those results for the audience or the, the, the general users to gain or improve the, the experience with the music. So data-driven approach is one of the basic characteristics. The other one is culturally aware uh, study of the music. And by that, the project uh, focused on five music traditions, these five listed here. Um, in fact, when I first uh, uh, met uh, Xavier, uh, the, the, the work about the first three traditions started, the, the, the one about Chinese was not fully defined at the moment, so he was already working with Tinju, also with Tin music. And, and as the some conversation, we decided to focus on Tinju for some reason, because um, the, 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 the main uh, goal is to apply technologies to, to, to data. Uh, sorry, I clicked this before that. Uh, to, to use data, and it would will, will be easier to get uh, uh, recordings for Jinju than the, the for Jin, because this was not an ethnographic project. We won't do the recordings ourselves. That was the original idea that things turned out differently. Um, so there was a lot of recordings available for Jinju. Uh, Jinju offered very interesting characteristics for research. There was a, 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 a well a corpus of literature to, to support our findings. And it, it is a vocal tradition, and with that we can compare with the other ones. So when I started my PhD, I decided I could benefit from those technologies for my own research and add this component to my methodology in order to support my findings with some statistical and quantitative uh, results. Um, the problem is that I had the background in, in, in music technology, and, and I've been very uh, lucky to come with the help of many people from the, from the NTG to guide me to learn how to program and to reach uh, uh, an state where I, I'm autosufficient to create my own code and to implement my, my own research uh, from this field. Uh, so once I established this component of my methodology, I did some, a literature review of if there was some uh, preliminary work using uh, computational tools for the study of, of Tinju, and there were some, some papers. Uh, most of them are from uh, uh, addressing mostly technological tasks. Uh, perhaps that some section is the Sandberg, which is more from acoustic features or black in emotional identification, which, but, but, but from a, a very uh, technological point of view, all of them created uh, databases or data sets of recordings that are useful, but only one of them, uh, uh, the, the, the one worked by black, had the recordings available for other researchers to use. And, and it is not a very big corpus. So that was sufficient for my, my, my own purposes. Uh, and that's why we uh, had to embark in the creation of a corpus for applying this, this methodology, which is the next section of my presentation. Um, in fact, corpus creation is an essential uh, aspect of the community project. Seeing it is uh, data-driven in, in methodology. Um, it became a research task in itself, creating a, a good corpus for, for these uh, technologies. We developed uh, um, a methodology for creating that. And um, 
the result in the case of the Chinchu, uh, um, so for, for creating the Chinchu music corpus, the general purpose was uh, the research of traditional Chinchu singing through computational methods. And uh, according to this purpose, we followed uh, three main criteria. The first one is focused on the traditional repertoire, and, and especially the Chanton C, uh, because we wanted to study the, the elements of the Chinchu musical system without the influence of academic composition techniques that came to, from, from Europe uh, after the second half of the, of the 20th century. Uh, we, we took the aria as a main analysis unit, so that with that we discarded uh, recordings of full plays, of full scenes, or, or, or scores of, of full plays. Uh, of course, if, if we were uh, to apply a computational methods, so all the data required a minimum of quality, so we couldn't use historical recordings, for example, for doing our research. So the result of this is the Tinju Music Corpus, uh, uh, the first state of, of which was published in, in Eastman in 2014. Uh, which had these four collections, and this has been a col co collaborative effort. Many people contributed to that, um, and these bars here indicate my degree of implication and of my degree of responsibility in each of the collections. And as you see, I've been mostly involved, and I'm mostly responsible for the first two. <laughs> so I, in this presentation, I'm going to present these two collections, um, starting from the Jinju audio recordings one, which is the first one created. So uh, and that was, uh, that it is available through this repository in Senado. So this is the one first created. So the, my first uh, aim was to do my research from audio recordings. So we collected a lot of commercial recordings, and all the ones, literally all the ones we can find from, from China. We we, we bought all of them. And, and the result <coughs> is we have this collection of uh, nearly 1,700 uh, recordings. And they covered the, 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 the topics that I wanted to address uh, at that time. There was these five role types and the two main Shenzhen, the one, the two that characterizes uh, Qingqi music, which are Arhuang and CP, and they were well, well covered in, in, in the corpus. An interesting element of this collection is that all the metadata are stored in music brain, so for all the corpus, uh, all the corpora in the Music uh, project, the metadata are stored in this, in this platform, in music brains, uh, so I updated manually all the metadata of, of, of this, this is a page for, a one, for one release. So we have all, all the tracks in the original Chinese, we have the cover art, we have all the data. And the advantage of this platform of Music Brains is that it provides a unique identifier for which we can uh, identify this, each of the elements in, in, the, in the platform. Uh, for the releases and for all the elements, we also have a romanization in, in Pinyin uh, that I did with the help of other uh, Chinese uh, researchers. Um, and, and that's the same for each element. For example, this is a page of a singer of Wang Rong Rong. And we have uh, all the releases that uh, she recorded, uh, biographical information. And we also tagged um, all the elements related to the music, like uh, the role type and in cases specifically stated in the, in the, in the release, the, the school to, who, to which uh, the artist belongs. And in the case of the recordings, it's the same uh, situation. We have all the information about the recording. This is a single track, a single recording. So we have uh, information about the, the work, the area that is recorded. And we also manually tagged um, all, the, all the musical information, the, the, the Shenzhen and the Panshi. And each of these elements have a, a unique identifier. So we use this information through in, in this platform, Dunia, that was created in the community project, which is a platform for browsing and exploring the corpora and also to showcase the, the technologies uh, that we use, and which uh, has an, an API uh, through which we can access all the metadata that is stored in music brains through the identifiers, and, and by that organize the, and, and retrieve the, the corpus. So once I have the collection, I start exploring and, and, and experimenting with it. And, um, for example, in, 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 in a first attempt, I used a, 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 a code <coughs> made by, by one of my colleagues for uh, analyzing Carnatic music, and I extract these uh, pitch histograms. Each of these histograms is the average of five recordings, uh, considering these two factors, the, 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 the role type and the Shenzhen. And with that, this red line is the first degree, this is the higher octet first degree. Uh, the aim was to characterize uh, each combination of, of, of roll type and Shenzhen, and it got some uh, interesting results that I presented in, in China. Uh, later on, I wanted to do some, uh, some more detailed analysis, and I compared the two Liu Pai, Mei Pai and Chen Pai, these two schools, Mei and Chen, 
uh, by looking at, at the range, uh, at the pitch range, looking at the, some characters of vibrato, of loudness, and timbre. And, and uh, we got some interesting numbers that uh, could uh, tell apart these two uh, schools, and we published this in, in ISME in 2015. So the path was promising, but had an important challenge. So in order to do that, since we were uh, researching the singing, and there were commercial recordings with the accompaniment, the first required step was to separate the singing from the rest. So, and that was a very uh, uh, difficult task. Uh, we were lucky enough to be to have at that time in this in this department in this group the best algorithm for separating a predominant melody from 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 background uh, music, which is the Melodia algorithm developed by uh, Salomon here. Uh, but it was developed for other music genres, so it worked very well for pop music, rock music, jazz music. When applied to this uh, music tradition, the results were, were not as satisfactory as for those uh, genres. And, uh, that implied that we, do, we needed to do a lot of manual correction. So this is the pitch track and the red part at track that were manually drawn by, by me in order to correct that. So in this case, the correction was nearly 13% of, of the... In, in other cases, this is tongue roll type. For male roll type, it's were even worse. So it did require a lot of effort. And me and my colleague Conron decided to change the approach. And um, then uh, he decided to do this beautiful collection of a cappella recordings and went to Beijing to record people a cappella without the accompaniment so the algorithm would describe better the melody. And he decided to change to music scores. And that's why I created manually this collection of uh, uh, music scores that is available in this repository in Senodo and that was presented uh, last year in Izmir. So for creating this collection, uh, I took these three textbooks uh, as main sources, the ones I, that I learned in, in the National Academy of Chinese Theatre Arts in Beijing that were the, more basic, the most basic ones for, for, for teaching and, and studying the Jinju music. And I decided to focus in the following concepts. In terms of role type, I will focus in Lao Sheng and Tan, since they represent respectively the male singing and the female singing. Uh, in terms of Shenxiang, I will focus on the two main ones which is, uh, that represent Jinju music that are Arhuang and Siki. And uh, 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 about Pan Shi, I will focus on major Pan Shi uh, because we couldn't find, I couldn't find a, a satisfactory enough method for representing non major Pan Shi in, 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 in machine readable uh, scores. So, with this set, I took all the examples in these books that use this combination of elements. Uh, to create the collection. Mm, the, the original uh, notation in, in the sources are tiempo, as this number notation, uh, but uh, since I, the, the goal was to have a, a machine-readable uh, score, we first tried with some software for tiempo that w was not good enough, so I decided to use MuseScore and do it in staff notation. Uh, I maintained the two lines, the instrumental line and the single line separated, even for those cases where uh, the, and this is a common convention in, in Jinju studies that to maintain the accompaniment and the singing in the same line, even in those cases I separated the, the instrumental accompaniment uh, and the singing so that I can retrieve the singing part easily. So the result is uh, this uh, co collection of 92 machine readable scores, but since they are of different lengths, I think that a better representation of the collection is the number of uh, melodic lines, which is the analysis unit that is covered in the whole collection. And this uh, nearly 900 line, which is, uh, I, con I consider, a, a, a good amount of, of, of material to work and a good representation of the Jinju musical system. So uh, what is more important and <coughs> more useful for the methods I applied is each of this uh, material is manually annotated in the case of, of the scores. They are all manually annotated with the roll type, the shenxian, the pan shi, and, and also with some the possible recordings of, of the, of the of the score and, and, and the source. And, and the most important for me is this file lines data. We have uh, annotation for each of the 900 lines uh, that were done manually and, uh, and covers the road side, the shenxian, the panshi, the lyrics for the whole line and for each of the sections and where the lyrics start and finish in the score. And once I have this collection, I had this opportunity to do some uh, computational analysis of this music. I decided that was a good opportunity to engage in other uh, projects that I didn't thought at the beginning. For example, the research of the relationship between li linguistic tones and the melody. So all the lines are annotated uh, with the tones of the syllables. Uh, the, the tones were extracted first uh, automatically, but when we reviewed, Corona uh, and myself, manually, all the tones to see that they were accurate. Uh, and that's the first uh, research I did. So the, the study 
of the relationship between uh, tones and melody. So this um, topic is uh, acknowledged in all the sources uh, I reviewed uh, that, that there is a relationship between the, 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 the linguistic tones and the melody, not only in Chichu, in all Chinese traditional music and even in instrumental music. Um, but there is some problems that uh, avoided to, to reach to a, a, a definite conclusion about how this relationship is established. Uh, the first one is that in Chinchu there is two main dialects used, uh, the Beijing dialect and the Huguan dialect. Both of them have the same uh, tone categories, but the realization is different in each of the dialects. And the problem is there is no clear rule to know when each of the dialects are used. So we don't know what is the basis, the, the, the basic uh, tonal contour uh, upon which the melody is built. <coughs> so secondly, is that different authors talk about this relationship in different manners. Some author talks about the relationship between the melodic contour and the tonal contour, uh, which I call uh, the disyllabic contour. But other <coughs> authors talk about the relationship between the pitch material of one syllable and the, and the relationship with the following one, uh, which I call the periwes relationship. But even in this relationship, there is different approaches. Some authors uh, compare the first note of one syllable and the first note of the following one, but others compare the last note of one syllable and the first note of the following one. So different authors have different approaches to, 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 come, uh, to, to come to analyze this problem. And uh, finally, when reviewing this uh, very interesting paper by Su Cheng, where he reviewed 90 years of research on this topic, uh, one of his conclusions was uh, this quote here that I found very interesting, that says that the majority of authors obtain their understanding of linguistic tones in Qingyu through their personal experience. Uh, and this experience in, in its majority was obtained by listening or imitating. So I thought here that I have a chance to contribute to this topic by apporting some quantitative and statistical information through my analysis of, of this course. So we did some, uh, some previous work, uh, because as I, as I mentioned, first we started working with audio, and we published a couple of papers with uh, one collaborator, Tan Shuo, which is a computational linguist. And this one was published in, 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 in 2014, and it was the first approach, and we considered only the uh, syllabic contour, just the relationship between the, the tonal uh, melody and the, mel uh, the melody of the single syllable. And the, the results were not conclusive enough. For example, this table here uh, shows uh, three different melodic shapes, descending, ascending, or level. And for the four tones, we see that the distribution is almost equal. So we found all the, the, all the shapes in all the tones. So uh, perhaps it was a problem of our methods. Perhaps we should uh, look forward or we, we didn't understand what the problem. But the results were uh, uh, interesting enough uh, to, to, um, to make us continue researching in this way. And we published another paper in 2015 <coughs> where we approached the periwaste relationship. And, and for example, this graph here compares the first note and the first note of two consecutive syllables, the last note and the first note of the, the two last notes. And we see that uh, the, the comparison of the two first notes of two consecutive syllables get better prediction of this relationship uh, established in the literature. So in order to create, to do this, this research, I created a, a data set of uh, annotated, manually annotated uh, areas using this, this software, PLAT. Uh, so each recording is annotated with some uh, information about the, the, the singer, the school, the role type, and then the Shenzhen, the Banshi, the boundaries of each line in the recording, uh, uh, and then the boundaries of each syllable. And then we can extract the melody for each single syllable. And we also annotated, I also annotated the, the percussion patterns because we, we also do some research on that, but I won't uh, mention that here. Um, so the result is uh, 34 <coughs> manually annotated recordings, and this data set is, being, uh, is also available <coughs> in, in a repository in Senodo and, and has been used for other research. So when I proceed to do my analysis through the scores, I, I wrote this code here from, with two main functions, the syllabic control function and the periwise relationship function to analyze uh, these two uh, relationships. Um, and this code is fully available in, in GitHub. Uh, this is one of the characteristics of the research done in the MTG and, uh, and the community project, to be open, to have all the data and all the, all the code open to, for everyone to use, and also to be reproducible, so that the people that use this code can reproduce the, the, the results that they show here. And that's why I also create uh, other, uh, other code in order to help people to, to, to help researchers to use my, my code with one single command line. And with this line, you can reproduce the result I, I showed in the thesis, which is uh, these three tables. I will go into detail uh, to that, because I think it's well described in, in, 
in the thesis. It was first presented in, in, in DLFM in last year. I just want to summarize some of the, of the conclusions I took from these uh, results. First is that the syllabic contour and the first first pairwise relationship complement each other in order to define this relationship between tones and, and, and melody. Then the, by far the tone one is the best defined. The percentages of each trend for tone one are very high, so we can, we can have some very strong claims about tone one. That's not the case uh, about the other tones, uh, where the percentages were not uh, very high, so it means that there's a lot of variation. But generally, we can characterize tone one and, and two, three as having generally a descending syllabic contour, and they are usually sung higher than neighboring tones. And it's the opposite for tones uh, two and four. Uh, they have uh, generally an ascending syllabic contour and then sung lower than neighboring tones. So uh, from these characteristics, I consider that the best dialect that explains these general trends is the Huquan dialect. But as I said, the, the percentages are not high enough to make definite conclusions. I can say that the, this might have a, a bigger influence in Tinju singing than, than Beijing dialect. So what I took from that is to be very uh, aware of the tone one when doing my analysis of the melody uh, to see the influence of this tone in, in, in the melody that I was analyzing. And this is the, the part that I'm going to present now, which is the, the core uh, of my thesis, the comparative analysis of the scores. So the basic uh, um, process uh, is this. I got the data set, I apply my analysis and in order to obtain a melodic schema. So I go to, through these three steps one by one. So the data set is the uh, collection of music scores, but I, I needed to organize them. And to, to organize those lines, I use the criteria of having line categories. So to, to select lines that uh, uh, represent the same entity of these four uh, uh, music elements, the root type, the shenxian, the panxia line type. For example, having the, this tang cp yuan bang opening line. And so I took all the lines that uh, met this criteria and I put it together in a file. All these files are also available in, in, the, in the data set uh, of the scores. So uh, these are some of the lines uh, that belong to this line category and I align them uh, in each of the three sections so that I can compare each section vertically and, and, and facilitate the analysis. Um, with that, I, I, I come with uh, 46 line categories. I thought that there was too much to approach the analysis manually, so I, I, I wanted to compress the, this variety of categories, and there was a very natural way to do it uh, by considering the different punch and grouped these line uh, categories according to the meter. So I grouped all the 4-4 uh, uh, punch in Manpan and then all the 2-4 in Yuanpan and the 1-4 in, in Kuaipan. And with this result, instead of having roll type Shenxian and punch and line type, uh, I will change the punch to punch group. Uh, to do these line categories, and uh, the result of that is having uh, these 24 line categories, which is the basis of my analysis. So once I have this data set, my goal was to come with this sort of representation, this melodic schema here. So what I want to represent here is melodic motion. Is what are the uh, milestones that make a, a melody goes forward? So uh, in order to do that, uh, I have two different kind of uh, notes. The, for one, the open head uh, notes uh, will represent uh, essential points of the movement, like milestones where the movement to tends to. Uh, then with uh, filled note heads, I take intermediate steps, uh, requiring intermediate steps to get there. Is there it frequent steps, but not uh, necessary ones? I, I'll notate that with small head uh, filled in uh, note heads. And in, uh, in case there is common um, progressions or common melodic phrases or melodic motifs, I, I will notate those with these slurs saying that this is like a common melodic phrase or motif. And finally, if there is a, an alternative uh, to, to the other uh, components, I will uh, notate that with, in vertically with, with some indication, for example, here, that this is the note used for when a tone one is present. So this was my goal. So to, to get from my data set, uh, from my data set to this uh, schema, I performed first a uh, manual analysis. So I took here some of the lines that belong uh, to to, to this category, Tang Arfa Man Pang, opening line one, um, just the first section, uh, to illustrate how I did my analysis and to show what are my criteria to, in order to extract my, my, my schema from, from such a um, score. So the first thing I did is, uh, of course, is to uh, notate all the tones so I, I can see where the tone one is present and to see if there is any influence there. Then uh, literature describes Shen Chan mostly in terms of cadential notes, so my first uh, step is to look at the cadential notes 
I can see in this case, for example, of the lines <coughs> it cadence in, in the fifth degree, so I have his degree as my final point in this melodic motion. Then I will look from my fieldwork experience, I learned that the importance of the syllables, I will look to melodic trends for each syllable. And for example, here in, in the first syllable, I see that they, most of them start, uh, all of them start with uh, the higher octave first degree, sometimes in, in, at the beginning, sometimes not. So this was a, a point that should be there, that the, the melody comes from the argon to the fifth degree. Um, in the second syllable, uh, I found that not in uh, all cases, uh, and, and now we will see why, but it was a common trend in going to this point, to this lower point, which is the third degree. So even though it's not the more frequent one, it is a frequent point of turning direction. And this turning direction points for me was very essential, and I took those also as a milestone for, for my melodic trend. So once I got this general shape, uh, I continue looking at frequent or necessary steps. For example, here in the second bit, there is always a step in, in the sixth degree, so I added that to my schema. I also found these common um, melodic uh, uh, notes that introduce or goes as, as a step through points, uh, but they're not always present, they're frequent but not present. So uh, I took those uh, as a small uh, notes there. And then I've also found some common uh, melodic phrases and motifs. For example, every time uh, the melody reaches the third degree, goes back to the fifth one, so I added that with a slur. And also this common cadential, this always present, this cadential motif here, uh, like uh, Lado Sol that I, I added here. And finally, I found that in the second uh, um, syllable, every time there is a first tone, uh, it is sung with a higher octave first degree. So I added as an alternative as a first tone. So this, I just wanted to show what has been my procedure when doing the, the analysis of the scores. So um, once I have this analysis, uh, I supported those with some statistical and quantitative information I started from the score computationally with uh, this code uh, uh, I wrote with these uh, five fun functions. And this code is also uh, available in GitHub. And in order to be reproducible, all of the plots and data that are provided in the thesis in the second annex can be obtained just by right typing this single command line and, and everything will be uh, retrieved. Um, so as uh, you saw in, in the thesis, there is this several different kind of, of, of plots. I won't go into detail here because I think I showed in, in the manuscript how I, I've used this information to support my, my claims. I just want to highlight here that sometimes it was not that I support my analysis with this information, that, but this information guided my analysis. Uh, for example, just took an example here. This has these three graphs from uh, one uh, line category, uh, three line categories, the opening line one, opening line two, or closing line of this composition. And with this, I have a clear view of how melody progresses generally in terms of pitch range. And it would help me to have a, a predefined kind of melodic motion uh, through, throughout the line. And I could also look at some uh, interesting uh, pitch facts. For example, in the closing line, uh, the, the seventh degree which is a coloration tone, as it is said in, in, in G2 circles. Uh, here it's very prominent, and, 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 the, and, the, and the first degree is rarely used. So that would tell me that, uh, that would trace a flag to say, look at here and see what's, how is this pitch uh, be, behaving in, in this line. So I just wanted to give a, a small example of how this information uh, guide me in the analysis and not the other way around. So, after doing all this analysis, I come up with these 24 uh, schemas for each of the 24 line categories. And then I compare all of them between them in order to come to uh, my most awaited slide of all, which is my final <laughs> result. <laughs> this, is, this is a presentation of uh, the two mentioned Chang and Tinju, this R1 and CP. And this is what I, from the beginning, when Shen Chang was very blurred to me. Now it's not as blurred, it's not completely clear, but it's, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's a bit more uh, understandable. So uh, I, I, def I explain in the thesis the, the description of this schema. I just want to point out here that from the literature I reviewed at the beginning, uh, there is the claim that all the different variations in, in, in this Shen Chan comes from the main singing, from the Lashen singing, and all, all, everything derives from that. <coughs> from, from my findings, I find hard to see how uh, the Males, female singing melodies can be derived from these ones. In the case of R1, I found that in the case of opening line, both of them cadence in, 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 the, in the, the first degree, although in different octaves and with, with a similar motif, but the phrase of the line is different, especially with this very prominent seventh degree here that is not present here. And in, in the case of the closing line, 
uh, even though uh, induction sometimes cut comments in the, in the lower uh, fifth degree, uh, the, the most predominant one is the second one, and that is not to be found in the, in the female degree. But in the case of CP, uh, the relationship between TAN and Lausheim is even more different. Um, the, some people say that this, uh, this place of uh, a fifth higher in, in terms of, of model uh, characteristics, but uh, this very characteristic motif here, which is do sila, uh, with, with the use of the seventh degree, which is very distinctive in, in this tone, is not to be found ever in, 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 in Laoshen. And, and, and luckily, I found that a Hai Zhen, a Sichu music historian, uh, claims that uh, the Shenzhen from which uh, uh, Laoshen pro province is different from, from Tan. So perhaps this finding could help support the, the, this claim. OK, so. These were, were my findings, and I just finished my presentation with some final conclusions. <coughs> so I just want to review what I think are my main contributions from this research. Uh, first, of course, are the melodic schema. These are the main ones, but also the ones for each of the line categories. Um, I think uh, a very important contribution of this research is the availability of this a uh, very beautiful uh, corpus of Chinchu music, especially the, uh, I would highlight here the two collections in which I contributed more. Uh, so if I took back this, uh, this table that I showed at the beginning, now we can add the Chinchu audio recordings collection uh, that is uh, created with a very musicology, musicologically informed uh, uh, topic that had an exponential uh, growth in terms of uh, recordings available and that is fully uh, available for research purposes. And I also added a new uh, collection of a, a different kind of data, which is uh, uh, machine readable scores, uh, with, uh, which is also available for research and that in, through these uh, repositories in Senado. The third contribution I would need to highlight is the uh, contribute with some statistical and quantitative information about the relationship between tones uh, and, and melody that is available for everyone to, to, to check and uh, to extract conclusions. Um, then, uh, all the plots and tables that uh, I decided to add all of them in, 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 the, in the thesis because I thought it, was use, it could be useful material for other researchers in order to make their, their own findings and to, to use this information in, in their own uh, ways. And, and finally, this uh, code that is open and is reproducible so for everyone can use and tune to their own uh, purposes and to, to apply to their own research stacks. Of course, this was our first approach uh, to the topic through this methodological framework. Um, and in this process, I, I found uh, uh, I'm conscious that there are some limitations to it. Uh, first of all, uh, my, ambitious, my ambition at the beginning was to study the musical dimension of Chinese uh, theater. Uh, I've covered so a limited part of the Jinji musical system. Um, <clears throat> then, uh, through this year, learning about computational methods, I discovered a lot of possibilities and, and opportunities that these methods offered and that I, I not <coughs> exploited in this uh, first attempt, and I could be beneficial for future research. Uh, and then the analysis of the Shenzhen itself is also limited to the singing line. Uh, Shenzhen is more than that. There is uh, structures that go that are bigger than, than, the, than the line, like the aria, and it's more than the singing part. It's also the instrumental uh, music that in informs the, the Shenzhen and that, that is not included in my research. So this opens up uh, paths for future work. Uh, for example, increasing the corpus. We, we intend the corpora and income music like ever growing entities. So the collection of music score of every collection in the corpus can uh, grow in the future, especially adding other role types, other Shenzhen and non metal panchi if, if we find a satisfactory way to do that. Um, also to address new research stacks uh, using this data. Uh, for example, I, I highlight here the study of melodic <coughs> patterns. In fact, we started doing that, but uh, with the collaboration of Conrong and Xavier, um, and it was a very complex uh, topic. We needed a lot of background knowledge, so we decided to to, to leave it for future work. Um, then to explore the, the corpus from different disciplines, uh, I think this uh, offers a good opportunity for, for cognitive studies to support and to give me some material for doing that, or to use all this information for uh, music education. Um, uh, and finally, to expand the analytical scope, that's uh, more, the more uh, related to my, to my research, to uh, analyze uh, going beyond the sound couplet to see if, uh, larger structures or, or other in, in elements like the instrumental accompaniment, going beyond R1 and CP and study other Shenzhen, including in the Jinju music, and even going beyond Jinju and consider other genres that belong to the Pi Huan system. 
So, uh, as a result, I just want to summarize here some of the results of the thesis I, I, I published for uh, papers in peer reviewed conferences as, as first author and six as uh, second or third author. Uh, I also presented some of the partial results of, of the, my research in for national and international conferences. And as I mentioned at the beginning, one of the characteristics of the community project is to have an impact in society. So, in, in, in this spirit, I also uh, contributed, <coughs> I was a bit invited to give some talks about Chinchi music and Chinese music in, in, in Nigerian institutions. Uh, we created two tutorials that, that we gave in Nismin 2014 and, and also one that we spread to 15 Chinese institutions that we taught in, in, in China. And I had organizing a concert of, of, uh, of Chinchu and also one of, of Quinchu. And now, uh, at this, I'm taking one of the paths for future work, uh, going to, towards uh, music education and uses all the data we collected and all the tools that I created to help people better understand uh, Chinchu music and to better appreciate uh, this genre. So that's all for me. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Raphael, for a, a virtuosic display of, and compression of, of your, your thesis into, into just a few moments for us. That, that was uh, fascinating to see you negotiate your way through, through what, what could be quite a dense project, I think, in, in less capable hands. So, so thank, thank you for the, the orality of, of that and reminding us that this is a performance art uh, uh, as well. Um, and I, I love that <coughs> the photo of you with the beard. That's that's <laughs> that's one that will remain with me for some time. <laughs> I mean, you have your own beard, but but the kind of doubleness of the inception of the beard, uh, that that was wonderful. Um, we we have some questions for you, and I think our plan is that, that we'll pile all kinds of questions on you, sort of in one go, um, and then you can kind of filter them and and answer between them and okay. just possibly if that leaves a loose thread for us we, we might come back to you for, for a little bit of, of further clarity on that but okay. um, Alicia would you like to, to start out or uh, Augustine I'm so sorry oh, maybe uh, alphabetical Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you very much for your uh, I think it's a very nice and interesting uh, work so congratulations and I find it excellent in a number of aspects and uh, particularly in the distilled reflections that you share in the conclusions chapter, I think mm -hmm. they are very, uh, show a very uh, deep thinking about what you did. And I find them really inspiring and also a nice food for thought. So I also have to thank you the effort in writing about such a complex topic. I think what you did is extremely difficult. Uh, and you did it in a very clear uh, way. So I think the manuscript is really uh, a joy to read. It's clear enough. Uh, it's detailed enough, but clear enough, I think, in my <coughs> opinion. So as an absolute alien to Chinese <laughs> music and Chinese language in general, I understand lots of things uh, a bit. So uh, I also appreciate a truly honest effort towards the goal of the thesis. And I have a special mention to the, your argumentations given for situating your work within and across the different disciplines and sub-disciplines. <coughs> I think uh, this constitutes uh, a nice example, especially in, in, uh, for MIR researchers, which, uh, to my opinion, has almost normalized an abuse of language in this respect. <laughs> so I think, in, so fortunately, this is currently changing for good and I hope that your work will contribute to that change. So thank you for that. And I have a special mention to the reproducibility aspect of your work, uh, which beyond of the usefulness of the data sets, uh, uh, particularly <coughs> to the usability. They are really usable, uh, and as an example from the information you provide in the, in the companion website, I was able to reproduce everything from scratch at home, installing everything in about half an hour or so. So it's, uh, and also start doing more analysis on, on the data sets because they are really well encoded. So you can do lots of things. So, so I think this is really good news for the reusability of your of research. And 
And also I think uh, an important part of your contribution is your dissemination of all, lots of publications <coughs> and, and, and these things. I think this, this really is a, it's a point of value. So my intervention here uh, stems from my own ignorance about lots of things, uh, which I would say is uh, this ignorance is mild in music information retrieval, is moderate in comparative music analysis, but it's absolute in Chinese. So I don't know anything about Chinese. And also as a representative of the host institution and as a representative of the department in which most of the, uh, an important part of this work was, was carried out, I will focus my questions and comments mostly on information related, information processing, information workflows uh, issues. So here they come. The first one uh, has to do with the audio based uh, data set. So from your initial expectations about using recordings as a main source uh, of research, uh, you discuss the limitations inherent to, uh, in your words, more indirect representations of music, mostly music notation. Uh, and according to your goal of identifying the underlying melody schemata, which may not be present in the actual rendering of an area into sound, uh, my question would be in which sense do you think that audio signals or written notation is more indirect as a representation of the music? <clears throat> and then you mention all those uh, complications, technology was not good enough or doing this, we were not able. So this is very typical in MIR studies that we believe that a certain type of information is ideal for purposes and then we find some limitations for money, human resources, whatever. And then we blame that, we blame the technology, we blame the there is no money enough, whatever, and just sometimes we give up and do something else, right? So I appreciate that you uh, keep with the research question and changing just the methodology and going from music notation. <coughs> so in this sense, I would like to uh, comment about what uh, would you have done in an hypo hypothetical ideal case in which, uh, so imagine that from the very beginning of the thesis you have available all the information you may want in the audio domain, uh, really available in its optimal format, separate clean line of singing or even more multi-track recording of everything including the military and the civil section with all the instruments separately, time align. Imagine that you have everything for all the corpora of existing music areas. And uh, the question would be in which sense do you think the availability of this data would have benefited your particular research question? Uh, because in my opinion, for doing comparative analysis, I believe it's necessary at some point to reduce what we engineers call the dimensionality of the space, <coughs> right? And we need to rely on some type of symbolic information, something which is meaningful. So how would you have managed to uh, convert all those pitch time series into something manageable such as notes, which is a problem in itself? So I guess that required transcription, transcription step along all the problematics of the Chinese would have required maybe even more work in order to distill down this information for doing comparative analysis always uh, with the goal in mind. Uh, and in this respect, do you think that you, were, you would have ended with an analyzable data set comparable to the ones you uh, ended uh, in this thesis? Uh, yeah, this would be uh, the first, we're respecting with respect to the audio score collection. Uh, now we'll move to the music score collection, uh, for which you discuss the uh, possible bias in the selection of the canon, <coughs> right? Because of the purpose of the creation of this data set, which was mainly uh, uh, teaching composers, essentially. So I agree with you that in any case these sources are the best we can have, so I will not discuss that. But I wonder about a different type of bias, which has to do with the written notation, with the encoding. This is related with the previous question. So starting from the areas, then you have written notation, uh, because you need to, do, uh, to compare uh, comparable instances in terms of notes uh, or whatever. 
So in the process of encoding the areas, is of course a series of transnotation steps that involve interpretation uh, of the represented uh, uh, concepts, uh, always missing information, redefining information, which in a way only this transcription requires an analytical decision in order to decide what to transcribe and why. <coughs> Right, and this, of course, would uh, condition the results. Uh, you state your concerns about this score notation, uh, which you uh, quote as a posteriori notation from existing performances. And I quote you, you say that it's highly uncommon that the melodic line notated matches with precision the performance. So my question is, what do you mean by precision in that context? I guess you refer to transcription precision, uh, because it comes to my mind uh, from my early days of as a musicology student, the fieldwork transcriptions by Bela Bartok, which make very detailed transcription into score notation, uh, very rich, probably very accurate, very close to the audio renditions. But this notation would be probably very difficult to use for comparative analysis, because you have an overwhelming amount of surface details that prevents the song to be similar enough. So you would have ended in, uh, to somehow to that problem. Uh, and another question related with this, which is more a personal curiosity, uh, is whether all the paper scores came from actual audio renditions or not. So I don't know if there is some metadata in this respect, uh, in a way that we can expect some unifying criteria in the encoding of the areas into rhythm notation. Uh, because you uh, state that they were created uh, on purpose, which is teaching composition, and this fact may involve editorial uh, decisions, editorial biases in deciding what to transcribe and, and, and why. So I'm curious to know whether the paper editions include critical comments in this, in this respect, so where these scores came from. Uh, now I will move to uh, a little bit of methodological aspects in uh, determining the melodic schemata in a data-driven approach. And you mentioned a number of times that the computer-aided uh, musicology or computer-aided uh, uh, approach support and expand, and you mentioned both of them a number of times in your thesis, your manual analysis. And I recognize that these two items of added value, the support and expansion, seem uh, uh, have enough justification from the given examples. Uh, on the other hand, you mentioned that these tools in occasions have led the analytical process itself, or at least signal a way of uh, some type of question. So what is not, what was not so clear from reading the manuscript, you give here an example of ex really explaining uh, what is the process, it has to do with the method for deriving the pitch motion. Right, because uh, you mentioned in the, in the thesis that methodology is truly described, but what you actually do in the manuscript is you present theoretical framework, then you go to the uh, data set creation, the algorithms, and then you go directly to the results. So all this process of how did you find this, how, why those uh, results arrive are not uh, in written here. Of course, I can... Um, uh, derive from your justifications when you explain every single melodic schemata, you give this sort of this sort of example. But the process itself remains kind of a secret. Now, I know how to do comparative analysis, but there is no general way. I don't know if this example was general enough, or maybe for each single line, you uh, the decisions uh, would be. Uh, different, and I will uh, give two ex specific examples about uh, these decisions. So at some point you establish a set of factors for signaling the predominance of pitches, right, L like uh, the number of occurrences or the duration <coughs> or uh, whether they belong to some metrical important positions <coughs> and so on, but at any point you mention how they are aggregated or weighted those factors into a final decision. Also, I'm curious about how much of the observation were drawn from visual inspection of music scores or uh, else from the summarizing histograms 
so on. Or maybe you use also another means of representation, visualizing pictures and so on, I don't know. So maybe you can uh, give some comments about that. And related with the melodic motion, not with the selection of the notes that should be there or deserves uh, enough justification for be there, with the motion itself, uh, uh, it's uh, interesting that your computer-based data analysis covers pitch histograms and interval histograms separately, but never together. So you have pitch information, interval information, but never computes or exploit your data set in terms of uh, statistics from this node to this node, which at least would have account for a specific pitch motion, at least at the surface level, <laughs> right? So in comparison, in your analysis on linguistic tones, and, and melody, you really do this pairwise combination of, of these things. So I don't know if you uh, consider this thing from the computational approach or just was just by looking the score and so on. Related with this, uh, al along your discussion for justifying figures like this type of movement, you use qualitative terms such as mostly, often, generally, and so on. Uh, so, but to me, I think that most of the decisions stem from your manual uh, analysis, sometimes maybe supported by theoretical assumptions, I don't know, but the empirical evidence was used mostly for checking validation or rebuttal of, of your hypothesis. And this is a very important thing to me. The term validation, as you used here in your, in your thesis, uh, is a bit elusive. So in the case of you have an hypothesis and then you go to the data in order to find support and extra support for that, I find it just justifiable, this validation. But in the other case in which is the data who is the uh, statistical data who cues you uh, towards some, uh, some uh, factor or oh, this node should be there or whatever, you also use the term validation by manual analysis. So considering that your methodology is supposed or claimed to be data driven, and that you don't know the melody because this is what you want to find, uh, I would like you to clarify what you mean by validation in this case of being the statistics informing and how you validate manually, just to clarify that. Because with uh, more than a validation, what you provide are arguments which more or less uh, support the plausibility of the analytical results. But to me, validation is maybe a too strong word in this respect, which, which, which reminds me the term mostly used in MIR, which is ground truth. So I'm validating something, so I would like you to comment a little bit about that. Uh, another uh, topic it has to do with the discrepancies found between theory and, and evidence. So I'm happy that you find, you identify some discrepancies between what literature says and, and the evidence from empirical data, because I think this is how knowledge advances. Uh, regarding uh, uh, Lao Sheng Yuanban, I don't know if I'm saying stupid things in Chinese, probably, it's expected from literature that Erhang <laughs> and Xi Pi uh, present differences with respect to the intervallic content. Uh -huh. So in GP, yeah. yeah, literature yeah. says that the <coughs> intervals are larger, uh -huh. but then the data shows that this may, be, may not be the case. So as you said uh, uh, a number of times, it's reasonable to uh, argue that the conceptualization of intervals by Jinju scholars uh, are different with respect at least the way you compute it, the way the algorithms uh, do that. So, uh, and also, uh, I don't know, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm curious to know whether uh, the scholars that report these intervallic differences were relying on the same score sources as you or not, probably not. Uh, in this particular issue of the intervallic content, uh, I have to mention that uh, there are two, among the factors mentioned for deciding the predominance of notes, for instance, you mentioned the starting note in a syllable and the metrical position, right? So it's reasonable to think, to me it's reasonable, that these factors may influence the conception of intervallic content, at least from the perceptual point of view. <clears throat> so on the other hand, according to your algorithm, the pitch and interval histograms 
uh, are computed without considering these information. For instance, I don't know if you consider first to get the pitch information filtered out uh, in order to get only the first syllable, uh, the first note in the syllable and things like that, which, which is pretty easy to do from your data set, and then <coughs> compute the intervallic content in order to see these things. Uh, yeah, and almost, um, almost finishing. Uh, uh, so I think, or I believe that aside the observation of scores and the statistical plots, you surely devoted lots of time to listening areas, <laughs> listening, uh, sonifying scores, singing on your own, probably, in order to uh, get <laughs> intuitions about what you are looking for. So I would like to know a little bit about your own intuition as a listener uh, with respect to this melodic schemata you found in relation to the area instantiations. And uh, more generally, I would like to know your opinion about, in the context of data-driven methodologies, uh, about considering music perception as a valid type <coughs> of empirical observation. Uh, because this brings back to your first experiences with uh, Beijing Opera when you listened to them and you did not understand anything. But I'm pretty sure that along this process of four or five years of uh, studying, composing, analyzing, singing, uh, you are a bit of converted into an insider, <laughs> a little bit. So I want you to comment about this, about this fact. So. Uh, that's it. So from my side, I have to just congratulate you again and thank you very much for your work. Yo voy a hablar en español. Normalmente en las tesis sabéis que siempre hay alguien que se supone que los que estamos en el tribunal sabemos menos que los que está que el, que el doctorando que presenta la tesis. En este caso es una cosa espantosa. Vamos. Claro, mis compañeros de, de mesa también conocen algo del tema, pero yo estoy completamente fuera de onda. O sea, que es que realmente en este caso el que un miembro del tribunal esté... Y sobre todo ya cuando un compañero dice que es muy clara la tesis, pues no me he echado a llorar por... por no sé por qué, porque realmente... Uh, yo puedo, creo que apreciar alguna cosa, pero desde la lejanía y decir, oh, qué belleza veo allí, pero me gustaría ver algo porque no, no. realmente, bueno, antes que nada sí quería, por supuesto, agradecer que me invitaran a estar aquí, es un placer. Y luego también sí quería expresar mi, mi sorpresa por decir, voy a estar en la tesis de Rafa, pero sí, ya, ya, debería, ya debería haber sido doctor desde hacía mucho tiempo, solo con, con ver la última página, la última diapositiva que nos ha presentado y todos las, los trabajos que ha hecho, las conferencias que ha dado, los artículos que ha publicado, ya es, es un investigador que no tiene que demostrar, creo, que no tiene que demostrar nada. Entonces, en principio, cuando me ofrecieron estar en el tribunal, yo pensé, bueno, ya está. Claro, no pensaba que tenía que leer la tesis. <risa> y, y claro, entonces, en mi caso... Mmm, Hace poco, además, he presentado yo una ponencia hablando precisamente del teatro y digo, yo soy de las que leen. Yo procedo de un departamento de teoría de la literatura y literatura comparada. El problema que crea siempre el teatro. El teatro es un, element, un producto muy conflictivo porque, porque nunca se sabe en la teoría de la literatura, que, en la que siempre predomina el texto, pero además el texto digamos, verbal no el componente no verbal, pues siempre crea conflictos, porque claro, el, el teatro no es solo escrito. Y yo siempre reconozco que para mí el teatro es escrito, y lo leo yo sola, y me lo imagino yo sola. O sea que el componente musical que, que acompaña al teatro, esencialmente chino, pues claro, para mí es algo que en el que no, del que desconozco todo, todo. Así que no sé si debería callarme ya y ceder la palabra, pero no voy a decir alguna cosa más. Uh, <coughs> Bueno, entonces eso. Yo lo único que voy a hacer es, aparte de felicitar, bueno, digamos, en la organización, en la forma de presentación, lo que adivino que ha sido una especie de enorme trabajo, vamos, no adivino, es obvio, que ha sido un trabajo gigantesco, la forma de ir analizando datos, todo lo que, lo que pienso que puede haber después, me parece que ya es más que de sobra para felicitar al doctor Andy, por supuesto, a sus directores de, de tesis. Y entonces yo lo que único me voy a limitar a decir dos cosas de, de aspectos formales, que es a lo, que, a lo único que me puedo remitir. ¿vale? Y lo primero es la palabra que yo he estado utilizando todo el tiempo, teatro. 
Y aquí llegamos al a, a la cuestión de la utilización del pinyin o no pinyin en general con el trabajo. Claro, y no me voy a meter nada en musicología, ¿vale? Solo en esas cosas formales. Uh, yo entiendo la defensa que hay que hacer de la distinción y de las mm, cuestiones que tiene cada especificidad, cada, en cada, cuando nos centramos, en, somos especialistas en algo, queremos que todo el mundo lo vea. Lo que ocurre es que el lenguaje es muy tramposo, es muy engañoso. El problema es creer que no lo es en algún momento. En ese sentido, decir teatro es tampoco no decir prácticamente nada. Si vemos la evolución del término teatro también en el mundo europeo, desde los tiempos clásicos hasta hoy, pues ¿a qué le llamamos teatro? Porque realmente se hace muy difícil. Yo creo que esta tesis tiene, hay muchísimas aportaciones y a mí me gustaría poder aprovecharlas desde el punto de vista no de la musicología, porque no entiendo, yo no voy a utilizarla para mis alumnos, no puedo explicarles nada de eso, pero me gustaría ver cuáles de esos factores se pueden utilizar. Y el problema es que la utilización de tanto pinyin, de la transliteración, hace que resulte muy difícil acercarse, sobre todo para que a los de, para además los que no sabemos música. Hace un momento que estaba hablando con mi compañero y ha hecho una especie de matización entre melodía y tono, que ya ni sé que yo digo, Uf, no sé nada de esto. Y para mí es lo mismo, yo utilizo de una forma semejante canción, melodía, tono y tal, sin ninguna distinción. Entonces, digamos, a mí me gustaría ver esta tesis partes de esta tesis, me imagino que hay un componente fundamental desde ese aspecto que es absolutamente esencial, pero alguna parte, digamos, traducirla al lenguaje de las personas que no sabemos de esto ¿vale? y la utilización en ese sentido digamos, el descender a utilizar términos poniendo, aclarando desde el principio que, que no son adecuados, pero decir teatro eso, hasta, que, hasta qué punto la palabra teatro es aplicable a una obra de Shakespeare a un auto sacramental, a algo así tampoco sería, entonces el intentar buscar algo, o también desde el principio por ejemplo Sun Chan. yo hasta la página 100 117, que ya aquí aparece el punto de Sun Chan, yo supuestamente debería saber algo de que Sun Chan, teóricamente algo leí sobre música, pero no entiendo lo que es Sun Chan, no lo he entendido y está muy adelante. Entonces, muchas de las, claro, es, es, es un investigador que ya ha investigado mucho, entonces en mucha, la tesis utiliza muchísimos términos para que alguien que sepa bastante, de, vamos, no sé de los que estáis trabajando aquí con temas de chino, de teatro chino, pero creo que no entendíamos casi nada. Vale, y entonces un poco facilitar, a lo mejor facilitando poner al final un glosario, pero explicando un poquito, básicamente cuatro cosas para que pudiéramos ir siguiendo el, digamos, la elaboración, de, o, o el desarrollo, lo que adivino que es un desarrollo muy coherente del trabajo, pero que a mí me costaba mucho seguir, vale, y en ese sentido pues decirlo. Uh, uh, en ese sentido también, por ejemplo, la aplicación de las notas, quizá eso, yo procedo de una de un ámbito completamente diferente. Entonces, que una nota me ponga solo una Claro, yo empecé a leer esto en mi sillón leyendo el libro. Claro, no tenía el ordenador al lado. Entonces, voy a una nota y me veo que tengo que pinchar en la nota, tengo que irme al ordenador para leerla. Entonces, o tengo un libro o tengo un aparato que me ayude para leerla. A lo mejor lo podía haber leído en el iPad y haber tenido, pero yo sigo leyendo en papel. Son cosas un poco antiguas, pero que a lo mejor facilitarían alguna pues que las notas y las referencias que nos dijeran un poco qué es lo que te vas a encontrar cuando pinches en ese link, uh -huh. ¿vale? Un poco para, para facilitar eso, ¿vale? Uh, luego también, uh, uh, a veces me ha costado un poco la estructura, um, seguir la estructura de la tesis, porque a veces había cosas de metodología que ya se habían, llega el apartado de metodología estupendo, pero a lo mejor si había dicho antes algo también de metodología, después a, había cosas de metodología al final en la conclusión aparecen algunos argumentos que yo creo que podían haberse, por ejemplo el Shen Chang en el mundo, o el Jin Chi en el mundo que a lo mejor podría haberse traído creo que había algunas cosas que hubieran, no sé no sé si es por el propio desarrollo de la tesis de cómo tiene que ir funcionando al ir aportando to, tanto dato y tanto análisis de dato como verlo uh, se me ha ocurrido ahora, aparte del pinyin, lo de la Osh. Creo que poner la Osh no, no, no es de recibo. La Osh es un profe y ya está, ¿vale? Eso, sencillamente, pero bueno. Uh, me ha gustado mucho, vamos, me gusta la tesis y quiero tener calma para volver a leerla tres o cuatro veces y ya llamar directamente al doctor Caro y preguntarle. A ver, y por aquí, y pedir más explicaciones porque creo que tiene mucho y que creo que puede ser utilizado. Me, gust, me ha gustado muchísimo también la parte de la, 
de la honestidad que se ha mencionado también, en las, ver qué cosas se han conseguido, ver los caminos frustrados, que muchas veces parece los caminos frustrados no sirven, no al contrario, son muy útiles porque justo ayudan a que otros no lo sigan y, y la honestidad de, de ponerlo, de ver las limitaciones que hay, hasta dónde se puede seguir. Y yo creo, de, yo por, porque no quiero decir tampoco mucho más, de cara un poco más al futuro, lo que me gustaría es que a mí lo que me ha llevado a pensar estas, digamos, esta, este acercamiento a un trabajo y que de pronto dices, ajá, esto no sé nada, pero ajá, de esto puedo encontrar algo. Al, al ver, por ejemplo, ahora, por cierto, la, la, la exposición me ha parecido absolutamente extraordinaria. Digamos, me ha reconciliado conmigo misma y he pensado, ah, entiendo algo. Y entonces, eso es todo bien porque digo, sí, he podido seguir el discurso de Rafa. Va bien. Porque ha habido momentos en que eh, todos estos datos que yo creo que, digamos, tienen muchísima aportación desde el punto de vista de la musicología, de la ordenación del, de, del ordenador, y hablando de nuevo a, a una conversación que hemos tenido antes, la contextualización. Y me, me venía a la cabeza como, por ejemplo, en los poemas de Tufu, en el ritmo que se utilizaba con un determinado tipo de luxury de poema, cómo rompía la melodía, el esquema musical que se suponía que tenía, y lo rompía siempre aplicado en momentos determinados. Es decir, en una serie de poemas en el que está describiendo la guerra, justo pone los poemas, los desacordes, lo que serían errores, y los utiliza precisamente para digamos, intensificarlo significativamente desde el punto de vista del contexto. Entonces, con estos esquemas lo que me da la impresión es que muchos de, de todo, digamos, estos esquemas musicales que aparecen aquí, seguro que tienen una, una traducción, digamos, en el discurso verbal que luego hay o en el mensaje que quiere transmitir. No sé si me estoy explicando bien. Quiero decir que, por ejemplo, todos estos esquemas musicales, no, eh, no sé, y eso sería una pregunta también, la única pregunta que yo podría hacer, si en algún momento la utilización eh, por algunos autores, por querer enfatizar en un punto determinado, por alguna alteración que se pudieran hacer esos esquemas, pudiera tener que ver con un mensaje que quisieran dar, aparte del, digamos, de solo la propia ruptura, sino que significará, aquí es que estoy diciendo, estoy, estoy en desac... haciendo una deson... desintonización, para ver, a propósito, para precisamente incomodar a quien lo está escuchando porque, porque hay algo más um, no voy a decir nada más es que no tengo más que nada que decir de verdad, de nuevo um, agradecer estar aquí felicitar al, al doctorando y a, y a los directores y ceder la palabra a quien más sabe I wanted to begin by saying I've, I've written you some notes on, on this, and they're mainly small, small things, and they're, they're not worthy of, of discussion. So yeah. I'll, I'll pass you that, that set of notes later, and there, there's some tiny things there. Um, a, as a reader, one of my first impressions on this w was that I was interested in some of the ideological aspects, perhaps, perhaps more than the technological ones, or maybe it was that you explained the technological ones quite richly, and so I was reassured about about that. Um, and I, I wonder if perhaps Augustine was asking, in some ways, the same kind of question about um, the, the bigger issues of how would one analyze if one could from sound, and and does notation and the problems of dealing with it cause you many difficulties that you then have to overcome simply to get to where you want to be. Uh, and I, th I think I'm confirming that, that I, your, your thesis raised those questions for me. Um, I, I wondered too, and this is a, a somewhat related but, but a little bit different th thing, if, if there were words to say about averaging as an analytical approach, um, we know I believe that the average number of children in a family might be 2.3 or something, but nobody has a family with 2.3 children. <laughs> and and um, we, we could probably say things about race that we could average out in ways that would be meaningless and, and actually offensive even to, to those, those people, the populations that we then described. Um, and, Gender too. We 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 know that that women professors often earn less than than men professors. And if we produced a 
an average salary for a professor that, that, that covers up in important political ways a very significant, a very telling difference. I, I hope, by the way, that Alicia earns more than all of us, but uh, I'll just <laughs> throw that in. So, so I wondered if you could say more perhaps in your answer about your, your views in relation to these kinds of issues and problems that, that come with the act of analysis. Of course, analysis means reducing something and taking some things out. So, so you have to do it, but um, perhaps in relation to the technological side, you were good at explaining what was left out and why, why it mattered, or sometimes why it didn't really matter. Um, the, the, your discussion of speech tone, I thought, is, is a very good example of that. So you take us through the complexities of the two languages, essentially, um, and you tell us when it matters and when it doesn't, and, and what we can make of the results and how much we can believe them. So, so I'd like to invite you to say a bit more uh, about the, really the, the ideologies of analyzing and computer-based analyzing, um, why replicability is so significant, for instance, or why automaticness is sometimes so crucial as a means of evading bias and, and assumption, um, but what might be the drawbacks of that? So, so that's one area where, where I have questions. Um, I suppose the second area I, I wanted to raise with you is on, on um, the ability of your approach to generate new questions for the field. And I, I suppose, I, uh, as somebody else who, who's worked manually in relation to speech tone um, and, and did many things on paper that I can see you doing much more elegantly on computer, um, I, I feel there that you've, you've got better answers than, than I could get and you can have more confidence in your answers that, than I had in mine. And that's great, but in some ways that's a question that has been there for a long, long time about what's happening between speech tone and, and melody in, in that. So, so I'm wondering what are the new questions really? What, what, where could we go next? I'm not saying they're missing in, in your thesis, but I'm, you've raised my curiosity about that. And I think every tool brings with it sets of questions that are natural and comfortable to, to those tools. And, and so I'd like to hear about that. Um, this is more a comment than, than perhaps a question, but it might be one that you'd like to, to deal with. Um, we, we're in a situation of some change in practice, as, as you note, um, in relation to performance of Jingju and in, in relation to the education of composers, poets, singers within the tradition, and indeed listeners too. Um, and, and that goes back well, in some ways, to the, to the 1950s in terms of formal education, so two or three generations in China. But in some other ways, the, the reform movement goes back earlier, at least to the 30s and 20s, depending on which opera genre we look at. Um, so it's almost as old as the age of sound recording, anyhow. And, and you doubly have the issue that you want to use good audio quality recordings, which means that they, they are more recent, so probably the 60s and on onward, I, I would guess. Um, so there's something of an issue there about how one deals with enduring questions of tradition through products, sound products, and or indeed through field work, which has to be conducted more in, in the here and now. And, and, and I wondered again, I, I suppose I wanted to invite you to say a little bit more about perhaps the pros and cons that, that you'd encountered in, in dealing with that. And um, I, I suppose I'm thinking that if a singer is active today, then they will have been totally brought up within those new systems that conceive of speech tone and of melody in particular ways. And they, they would be very familiar with, with Western notation and with um, the, the intonations that perhaps we would all be familiar with, um, which wouldn't have been the case in, in the 1880s, let's say, at all. Um, so, so I, I think I wanted to know a bit more about the, the challenges of that. Um, I had a technical question occasionally. You, you describe your methodologies very clearly. Um, but, but here and there I wanted to know more. So, so when there's a dialogue song 
and you've transposed everything into E, for instance. What happens there? Because I guess I'm thinking part of a dialogue song is that one has different voices and one is come one is in the space of of musical interaction between two people who are kind of not trying to sound alike in many cases. And and that almost raises the question about if it's a male female dialogue song, then which are, are they how is that compromising their their approaches to to Shengqiang and the melodic choices that they're making or or that they've learned to to make. Um, and so that's an, uh, the tip of an iceberg, and it, it's a question which takes you into dramatic situation and context and, and the specificities, specific, specifics, let's say, of particular dramas, isn't, isn't it? And, and you, you did sort of remind us that you're aware of those and, uh, and so on too, but I, I suppose perhaps there's a methodological question uh, there too, isn't there? Um, I think other, other things which I'd, I'd like to discuss with you are, are really much more at the level of the detail and the paragraph, and they're, and they're probably not appropriate for, for this, this venue, but I'll, I'll give you writing on that, and we might have more, more chance to follow up um, later on over the months or even the years ahead on that. But as a final one, I wanted to ask you about sister disciplines, and um, I'm thinking here about psychology of music, which I think has been, been raised also already today. Um, and about linguistics, and I know that you have uh, at least one article that you've produced with a, a linguist. Um, I, I raise this because when, when I did a bit of work on speech tone myself and, and music, um, a linguist in the audience said to me that one of the things that's interesting with speech tones is that musicians think it's all about pitch, and that linguists don't really. And, and I just wondered if you could take that idea a little further for so some One of his points was that if you know the next tone coming is of a particular kind, you prepare for it in the previous tone. And so you, you shorten the previous tone so that you've got the space to make the next tone emphatic, for instance. And so the, the tones are kind of influencing forward and, and presumably backward as well. They're, they're not separate can, um, blocks of, of, of data. Um, but psychology of music too, I'm thinking about um, writing on salience, for instance, and, and how we take things seriously because we know they're musically important to us. Um, that there'll be people here who know better literature than I do, but I'm thinking of, um, for example, Jabkowski has a book, Conceptualizing Music, where he, he begins by analyzing Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and he tells us that actually, if you count up the motif there, the most common one is da-da-da-da, so, da 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 da, not da 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 da, which we think is the famous <laughs> one. But actually, empirically, the most common one, the one you hear most of all is piano, it's ascending, it's strings only. Da 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 da. Th th that kind of thing. And I think that relates to your, your question about how you know what to take out of these, these, these things. And, um, and it relates again to, to points that Augustine was, was raising. Possibly it relates to things that Alicia was raising, but <laughs> I'm, I, I won't pre pretend. Um, I, I wonder, I'm thinking now, perhaps we should give you a moment to, to answer and address some of the main concerns that you're hearing, um, and, and then we'll, we'll open it up a little bit further and see, see if there are further perspectives to bring in. <coughs> Well, first of all, thank you very much for, for taking the time and the effort to reading this, uh, I think, complex uh, thesis and, and, and topic, and, and for the, all the, the very detailed and insightful comments uh, about it. Um, I think I will just go chronologically and start uh, answering uh, Agustin's and then go far. So, yeah, there'll be some questions about uh, what would have happened if I have the technology to uh, uh, approach uh, sound. So, um, as, as I mentioned in the presentation, when I first came to, to the to the community project, this thing, uh, I was absolutely naive about technology. I was under the assumption that if the computer says so, then it's true. So I, I just wanted to find that. So the computer tell me what is actually said. Yeah, but that was my approach. Then I found that there was much more nuance, <laughs> so to say, like that. And um, I had I had always a great frustration with notation in Chinese traditional music. 
uh, um, my first contact was uh, learning ARPU in Peking University. So the teacher would come, give me the score. I would learn the score. And when the teacher came back to see, OK, you're playing the score. Now forget it. <laughs> so if you play the score, that's not the music. And um, OK, so <laughs> where is the music? And, and, and when I'm, on this person of reading, I have the scores. And OK, this is the score. I want to listen to it. And where is the score in the music? So uh, it's been such a complex situation. So I wanted to get rid of the score and go to the audio in my naive, my naive assumption that the answers are were there. So when I started working actually with the audio, I found all the problems that it brought. And I would realize in those through the development of, of the research. Uh, of course, there's, there's been thesis here, a huge topic about uh, similarity. Uh, Sankalp's thesis was about that, how to measure that, how to uh, approach that. In, in, in Tinku, this essential, this, uh, this saying of yi uh, chan tuo yong. So yi uh, chan, uh, I forget now, yi chan tuo yong. Yeah, this is one, one melodic line with many usefulness. So, so the, 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 the working with melodic patterns uh, is very important in, in, in Tinku. And uh, we, we actually tried to do that, and, and we, we didn't find that we were preparing that. So working with audio, uh, I thought they would allow me to work with all the nuances that are lost <coughs> in, in transcription. You mentioned transcription, and that is an important uh, issue there. So um, Tintu doesn't use a, a, a notation of its own. So the, the notation used for Tintu is not a, a, a how, to, how to say, an, an indigenous notation, so to say. It was developed for Tintu or by Tintu. The there was the concept notation, which is very simple and, and, and uh, been used very really for, for, for Tintu, but for Kunji. So this notation came from, from Europe. I think the system is French, the, this number notation. I was learned in conservatories when the, this aim of the scientific, scientific innovation of musical, uh, musical studies in, in China. And so the, the problem is that, that uh, it was not taught uh, for this tradition. And this, uh, a lot of information that is lost in terms of, of lightings, of, 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 of performance, and of, of, of microtones and uh, ornamentations. And I wanted to incorporate those in my analysis. So that's, I, I want, that, that's why I wanted to, to work with that. And I thought that that would be possible. And then uh, we actually started working with audio. We, thought, uh, we found interesting uh, findings about uh, tuning, for example, that is not present in, in, in the notation. So is it this question of the fourth degree, uh, that they say that the between uh, F sharp or, or, or F. Uh, and we found in the notation that they were effectively in, in, in the mid -term. But we found also uh, interesting thing, like uh, when analyzing the two schools, that I, I think was a uh, main school. They used to sing the higher of the first degree and to be higher than that, that, uh, that f a perfect octave from, from that one. And we, we could also see the skewness of, 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 the, of the peaks when the pitches are around to, to see how the, the variability of those and, and how, how they behave in, in terms of uh, atrocialization of the pitches. But when a transcriber had to, had to put it into, into paper, had to decide either F sharp or F, and, and, and they change about those. Um, and we also wanted to work with loudness, for example. This is very significant for, for example, discriminating the uh, champ high and may high. So use of loudness in Tintu is so important and it's so expressive. So I, we wanted to characterize that, and that has come from audio. Timber is, is, is essential also for that. So there's a, a, a conscious use of timber as an ornament there. And I wanted to, to learn that from but vibrato. Vibrato is not considered like a, a, a style of singing, but an ornament. So, so, so it's, it's a conscious use of vibrato. There's different ways of vibratos and that could be measured from audio. So that's why I wanted to, to work with it. And those are all the benefits I think uh, I could uh, get if we had audio and technologies available to, to work from that. Um, yeah, the transcriptions were done. Um, that is the problem of transcribing in Tinju music. So you have to constrain the music into this uh, uh, set of notation. And uh, I, I, I gave the responsibility to the uh, transcribe and start printing those books. <laughs> so uh, uh, there are no much met many metadata about uh, when they are transcribing. So first of all, they are transcriptions. So we don't have an, uh, an authoritative source like this is the manuscript by Beethoven of the Fifth Symphony. So someone who had to transcribe the, the melody that is already sung. Um, in very rare occasions, we know uh, that is sung by the, this, this artist that's already sung information. In very rare cases, there is information about the specific recordings, um, but generally there's no information at all. They just give you the melody. And um, this is just an a intuition of mine that I learned when I was there, and I saw how uh, composers were transcribing things or teaching me things. 
uh, most times what they transcribe is the melody that they have in mind. So they don't have to be in presence of an actual recording. So they have to learn this music in order to be. It, it is also the case, I, I, I haven't done a, a, a very thorough research on that, but it is the case that all the, read, all the authors I've read and all the teachers I have in, in, in China that were musicologists or composers, they're all performers. They come from the performance side. So they have an um, Arctic learning of that. So they learned the tradition the same way the artists do, by imitation. So the, the music they transcribe, they already learned and they have in mind. So it could be the case that they don't need a specific reference to, to, to do that. And that's why there is never a match of a recording and a transcription, because the artist will perform, perform uh, as they learn from the teacher and added some personal insights uh, on that. So, yeah, you mentioned uh, my part that uh, uh, I were very concerned, which is like this uh, validation. Um, Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult uh, aspect to treat, especially I learned here the concept of uh, evaluating, and, 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 this, uh, and this was never in my methodology before, and uh, I, I was completely oblivious of, of, of this requirement when I first started it. This, I, I learned that, and uh, sadly I don't have a, a definite solution so far, and I think it's, it's an important uh, aspect that I should uh, uh, to, to push in the future. Uh, from an ethnomusicology point of view, I would say that the most important validation would, would be going to the artist and say, hey, I've learned this from the, from the Xinjiang, what do you think? Is it representative enough? Uh, I tried to do that somehow with some uh, preliminary studies, uh, and it got two types of reactions. Uh, that would specifically say like me to that, with this word, more or less, that this is a salt issue. We know what a Xinjiang is. Mm -hmm. We don't need to research this. So that, that, that was my teacher there. Another one <coughs> told me, uh, okay, this, this representation worked for you? I said, well, <laughs> more or less, then, then it's okay. So I, 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 I didn't find much echo with, with the persons I, I interacted. So uh, yeah, I, I'm still uh, working with that. And then this relates with a topic that Alicia mentioned, and uh, also Jonathan, uh, uh, about the context uh, and how Xinjiang uh, works in context. So the purpose uh, I, I've read about uh, Chinti music analysis the North description analysis goes to the context, and and, and the, precisely what the the two one area and analyze all all those all those influences, and uh, it, it is well established to say that the, the melodies vary because precisely uh, the content of the lyrics. So one of the purpose I, I learned that in, in China with my Lee my, my teacher, the, the goal of an artist is to create a character uh, and to tell a story. So you use all all the resources you have in in, in, in your backpack to, to create that. Right? And so, so one of the resources is using one Shenzhen that gives you an emotional uh, atmosphere, so to say. But then you have to tell uh, 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 um, lyrics and you have to tell well, a specific word. And there is cases when they break the Shenzhen and they prolong and over a very long time. Or they add a fourth degree or a seventh degree that is very striking in, in, in a moment because it's especially dramatic. Or, or they change the rhythm or they, they, they alter the schema. So all these alterations are present and, and they, they are studied and, and uh, I've, I let, uh, I've read a lot, uh, a lot, I've read many papers about these specificities and how this uh, actor <coughs> uh, succeeds in conveying the content of this, of, of this dramatic content there. We never found, or we would have didn't found satisfactorily enough, this analysis of the general trends. So, uh, and that's what I wanted to, to, to do here, to go to what is common, not to the specifics. Because I think it's, it is already conscious and it would be easier. In fact, one of my plans for future is taking these schemas now, go to specific cases, and see how they are used in specific cases, and, and, and go to the to the lyrics, go to the content, go to the story, and say oh, how how this is uh, used. Um, yeah, intervals and histograms, uh, intervals and, and, and pitches, and the relationship with them in terms of long emotion. I tried to do that at the beginning. Uh, I didn't find a nice way to representing it. So I came up with, 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 with very complex charts with, uh, uh, and also the, the, the position of the pitches in, in, in the beat. So I, I got histogram per beat, uh, but, but then what if you have like, uh, like 16 notes or even 32 notes, it's too small. I, I, I didn't know, because you, you don't have to have the more important note in, in, in the first part of the beat. So uh, I, I just stopped it because I didn't know how to represent it. So I, I, I have had a long process of learning how to use these tools, and, uh, and I've used the ones that give me a more solid 
and so even though I know that there's more uh, other options that I, I could exploit and could use in in the future and uh, both uh, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Marturian and Dr. Stock mentioned uh, perception um, uh, I, I thought that the, that's the way to go on now for the study of, of the relationship with tones and, and, and melody uh, in, in a point I was even to say this is a myth there is no relationship with so and melody because I cannot find it but then when I was uh, singing with Li Jinping Lao Shi, and uh, sorry. Okay. So when I sing, we think I sang incorrectly. I went to hey, you sang that word. You're saying this other word. So there is a perception of the incorrection of that. And these cases, I, I found in papers some um, some people um, criticizing an artist that uh, sang incorrectly a song, uh, a, a character. And a, 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 a tone, and, and then they meant something else. So, so the conscious is there. So the problem is how it is perceived, how people realize those tones from the melody. Uh, so first of all, which tone category? The Hukwan ones. So Hukwan is, is it's not spoken, uh, at, at least not by people in, in Beijing. So it, it is the Beijing one. How the relationship is established? So uh, I think the the the, the, the new ways or how tone is perceived in music. There is papers about, about that in, in Chinese Cantonese music, in African music. Uh, I, I haven't found any specific for Jinju, uh, because I, I now I'm quoting uh, Elizabeth Quichman. Jinju uh, uh, uses, an, uh, his, uh, she says, uh, artificial from the part of art. Art, artificial kind of language that is, is not real. Um, and, and then, yeah, the tones are, uh, Affects the the, 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 the the syllables coming when they when I was learning with Li Zhengping Lao Shi and, and I wouldn't get uh, so the learning was my imitation he was saying I would repeat so he didn't want to see a score that because I was a foreigner he would give me the lyrics but not even the lyrics so he would just by, by my imitation uh, when I couldn't get the melody straight so he would make me pronounce the tone just the character and the tones were very isolated kind of of prestation. they were when studying. Uh, not in context. So, but I, I couldn't. I, I cannot say that there is no context there. So, is, is that I, I think that the, the, the step to go through that is through uh, uh, music psychology, uh, studies of perception. Uh, I mentioned cognition, and I think we have now some data that could help uh, to do that. And also for 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 Shenzhen, I've asked this question so many times to so many people there in China. What is CPR and Arhua? And um, the people who accepted to reply <laughs> uh, would just sing a melody. And it was usually the introduction by the Jinghu. Uh, so it's not even the lyrics, it's just, so Erhuang uh, starts with, and they start with this melody that the Jinghu uh, plays in, in both Erhuang and CP. So how is Shenzhen perceived nowadays is also an interesting question because now we're talking of melodies that weren't created in the, some of the, end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, that have been transmitted orally and then by rote. Uh, and I've uh, presence that, uh, I've been attending that in, in, in Beijing. Um, so there is no more incorporation of, of, of my thinking of, about these topics in, in the transmission. And perhaps I think since I'm talking about that, I will jump towards uh, Dr. Stock's comments of tradition and, 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 and the new uh, paradigms of uh, transmitting this. Uh, uh, this topic and the change in practice in, in education. Um, yeah, I discovered uh, when I was first uh, reading about uh, mainland Fine and, and, and all this, this area where the actor was in the center of creation in Jinju. So uh, the actor was uh, where everything comes uh, out. And I'm just working that in, in your analysis of, of Huji. Um, <clears throat> so the, with the support of perhaps a, a, a writer, literati, that would support the lyrics. And, and, and the team who uh, play or, or the musician to, to, to finish uh, the melody, but it was the, the, the actor or the actors in the center of the creation process. When the scientific uh, uh, education of, of uh, traditional music or traditional arts came to China, all these uh, um, disciplines or all these abilities were separated. So now we have composers that take care of the music, now we have uh, stage directors that take uh, care of the movements. So the actor is just. The, 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 the only role the actor, uh, I'm simplifying here, but this is to be expressive, is to take orders for different people <laughs> and to put it together on stage. Uh, and, and perhaps I'm talking with some melancholy because I got attached <laughs> to the subject of study and I, 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 I really liked the, the, the role of actors there. Um, 
So now when they're learning, uh, I, I have the experience, I think I mentioned in the thesis, I wanted to go to some students and give them some lyrics and sing this in GP. And they would say, no, no, I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. It is the, the composer who had to do that. So uh, uh, yeah, I, I think that um, the, the changing of education in, in DGU is affected by this uh, aim of, of being uh, scientific, so to say, and speci uh, have uh, specializations for input the disciplines that, uh, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the general what uh, merged into one single person that, that was the, the actor. And now actors just have to uh, focus on imitating um, as much perfect as possible what the, 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 their teachers are telling them. And with the support, but only when you are, uh, uh, have a high status of all recordings. So all recordings are now to, to, like a reference. For example, in this project that I showed at the very beginning, this app for, for, for uh, teaching how to sing Shen uh, Hong. Uh, was chanting, it was a student of Maybao, uh, what's the name? The, the, the Song of Melan Tan. Uh, uh, and, and, and she learned the, 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 the play from Dan and he learned it from, from, from his father. Uh, so she would refer uh, to, his mas to her master's uh, recordings and to Melan Tan's recordings to, to do this way. And, and the purpose of, of the app is to help people uh, learn Shen uh, Hong in the proper way, in, in the Melan Tan's, in the Melan Tan's way. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, uh, I think, this the, 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 the place that uh, these technologies and all recordings have in, in new tradition. Uh, um, and now the, the, uh, the, the main influence is the, 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 the phone, the cell phone. When I was attending to rehearsals, a uh, student just will record uh, everything and then repeat that uh, uh, back at home. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm missing, if, if I miss something, perhaps we, we, you, you can replicate uh, later. Uh, um, Alicia, you, you have to be here. So, because, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it, it, precisely because you say, because uh, theater, uh, when we're talking about Sichu, uh, <laughs> it's, it's quite limited. Uh, Dr. Scott had a, a very interesting uh, argument about that also. Uh, I didn't want to do with just a, a musicological uh, uh, work, perhaps I, I failed on that. Uh, I wanted to be always have always impression that it is only a part of a very general uh, artistic form, and and I my aim and that that's what the title of of the thesis contribute to one of the dimensions of this very complex uh, uh, theater. So that's why I wanted to have your your point of view and, and it's very informative and, and that, that that you give me this feedback and I will take that into account uh, for future work. Uh, theater seats you, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a, a, a a great debate. Uh, uh, I put the activist hat <laughs> in, in, in the thesis. I was surrounded by people working of uh, Indian music and working with uh, Turkish Ottoman music, and they were talking about raga and tal, and they were talking about makam and usul. And I, I want to talk about Shenzhen and Pasha. I don't want to give an expression. I, I don't want to have a, and talk, I handed the activist hat now. I don't want to have a glossary say Shenzhen is this. I just want to Shenzhen be somehow as self-explanatory as raga it would be. So that you need a lifetime to understand what a raga is. So I don't want to uh, simplify Shenzhen in a explanatory. I understand what you say. Uh, when publishing for other readers, uh, perhaps uh, I, I would know, use the same. Of what I do in some presentations, at the beginning I say, today I want you to learn one Chinese term, which is xi and I say that and because we talk about, you know the argument, we talk about kabuki, we talk about no, so I want to talk about, and then you have the problem, you have nearly 300 different journals in China, so do you expect people <laughs> to learn all the different Chinese terms from other journals when you, you can say Cantonese opera or, or Beijing opera? Um, yeah, the debate I, I, I think is, is not close. Uh, uh, I think uh, this is a very personal opinion, one of the tasks of the academic is to uh, be specific and promote the, the, the specificity of, of the terminology, even though when in other fora, perhaps uh, adapt the discourse uh, uh, somehow. Uh, Bill Jones mentioned that uh, situ has been translated according to the speciality of the scholar, as drama from literature or, or opera uh, from musicologists or theater for theater studies. Um, and one of the thing of the main characteristic of Sichu, as uh, explained by my professor Lee Jenping or, or Hang Teng, is the Songhezi. So perhaps classifying one of the categories would 
institute. But uh, I totally agree that uh, according to to the uh, user of, of of the book we produce, we have to adapt. And not so the goal is to make them attracted to the topic. <laughs> not saying this is impossible. I, I control the. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I mentioned uh, about the changes uh, of the adaptation of, 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 the, of the schemata in, in the context. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for all the comments uh, that, that made me think uh, for future publications and, and, and to, to take into account, into account all, these, uh, all these topics. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's, um, uh, Dr. Stock mentioned uh, the problem of um, analyzing and re reducing and, and the ideology of, of analysis of, of um, averaging. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm aware that I, I'm, I'm trying, um, I think this is not a, a, a representation, a full representation of the concept, this, this, this number at all. Uh, as you say, having 2.3 children is, is, is not a representation of, of an actual family. Uh, but since I don't, go in, I, I, I don't want to uh, study the specific area, in this case, uh, the specific melodic surface, and what I want to have is, is a general common trend underlying the, the production, I think this is an informative way to approach uh, the common trend. So, uh, as I mentioned before, my plan now for future work is to take this and now go to the specifics. So, if, if a, yeah, so the medium of the family is 2.3 children, now go to a family and see. So, I, I don't know if the, <laughs> the analogy is valid. But, but I think it's just a way of approaching uh, a, a, a music entity that is, is not available from, from melodic surface. And of course, it has its limitations, like uh, all production has. But I think it's a, a, a nice way of relating concepts, relating uh, uh, um, areas, and to mm. offer some, some insights. Um, yeah, um, uh, precisely because of that, when there is a Tui Chang, a dialogue, uh, and they make different use of, of tempo, of timbre, perhaps even, even tuning, um, yeah, that could belong to this second part of going to the specifics. So what I did now, I, I put I selected image because it's the most common key suggested by authors uh, across all these <coughs> references. So if there is a dialogue, and I have a uh, scores with uh, Tui Chang, uh, I would separate those that according to the line categories. So, <laughs> so the ones, if there is a dialogue with Lasheng and Tang, I have a couple of those. Uh, so the, the lines for Tang will go to the file with all the Tang lines, and so this disappears in, in, in my analysis. So what is very interesting now is going back to the specific and see how my schemata uh, interacts there in, 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 in context. And yeah, and I would like to finish um, with the new questions. Yeah, tons of those. <laughs> yeah, so in, in, the, in, in the process of doing, so I just wanted, at the start, I just wanted to extract from, as I say, I take the computer and tell me this, this is the schema. And in the process, I found so many questions interesting to, to, to address. One is the uh, melodic patterns. Uh, which I think is very important in, in, in Tintu analyzing. And, and I, I, they told me that, uh, that this, this got each and go on uh, there. So that there is a concept of pattern used there. And to retrieve those uh, automatically would be very, very interesting uh, to do. And, and also from a perceptual point of view, as, uh, as I mentioned before, when I would go to this dead end of how to go further in understanding of the relationship between tones and, and, and melody, I think per, uh, perceptual studies is is, 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 is the, the way to go there. Then the relationship between the, the accompaniment uh, uh, and the melody, this uh, comes to a heterophony that is so, so diverse that it almost loses its, <laughs> its meaning. And so, so see, see how the relationship actually done there. And now we have data, we have, we have the scores. And uh, I'm going to run these some recordings of a cappella with the, also the team who in separate tracks, so we can uh, analyze those. Um, we have uh, lyrics that are also ma machine readable. So we, we did, we, we, we published a paper that is not here because uh, uh, I think we didn't finish the thesis, analyzing the context, so automatically standing off topic. So in, in the collection of, of, of scripts, uh, there was uh, applying some natural language processing topics to understand how the content of the lyrics relates to the, to the selection of one particular punch uh, and, uh, by extracting some general uh, linguistic topics in, in the lyrics. Um, so, so yeah, the, the when you think you're trying to solve something, four questions opens up, and, and, and then it's, it's always a uh, uh, food for thought and, and, and future work. 
Uh, so um, I don't know if I answered um, was it the context of you want to reply? <laughs> So uh, I'm aware that we're, we're keeping you on your best behavior for a long, long time. Um, <laughs> but there are still some, some voices that, that we could perhaps hope to draw. And I'd, I'd, I'd like to thank, by the way, the, the, the audience here for, for your, your patience and, and kindness and recognition of the, the kind of corporateness that, that, that a defense is too. I, I think that's important and, and I'm sure will be very much appreciated by, by Raphael in, in time too. Um, Supervisors, do, do you wish to to comment or add a word? Of course, you, you don't need to defend him. He's, he, <laughs> he's, he's absolutely doing that himself. But there, there might be some thought that you'd like to share with us. So, so, yeah, maybe just uh, some background of uh, for the thesis uh, that would uh, help uh, understand some of the things. Uh, first of all, this, I guess, is the first thesis uh, that we have here at the NTG there is in collaboration with humanities. In fact, there is someone with uh, really coming from ethnomusicology <coughs> without any background in engineering and, uh, and being able to, to, to join us and, uh, and basically do uh, a thesis that sincerely, I don't think very few people could do this uh, thesis in the world, I think. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> maybe I should mention the, the origin of this. Uh, when I started this uh, project and uh, we wanted to work on computational aspects of, uh, of uh, Chinese music. And uh, I went to China and, uh, and I spent a month and a half uh, traveling around looking for someone, uh, some Chinese person <laughs> who could <laughs> be able to handle that topic. And uh, I came back uh, without uh, no one, uh, without anyone. And, and then uh, uh, thankfully, uh, I mean, uh, I went to, to, to see uh, Dolores Falk, uh, uh, Synologist and uh, Department of Humanities, and basically said, oh, I have the person. <laughs> <laughs> this guy from Chipiona, <laughs> that you have to meet him. And, uh, and uh, I called him up, and after uh, three days we met, and I think it has been the, the decision, the fastest decision I have ever made. Uh, in five minutes, it was clear that he was the person, maybe the only person that could handle that. And despite not having had any, any engineering and computer science background. I mean, I think it's amazing what he has uh, succeeded in, in doing. And one of our biggest shortcomings in our field is that we work in music, and sincerely, very few of the things we do have a musical impact. Very few things of what we do can be of use to, uh, to, uh, to the humanities and to the musicians, to the musicologists. And sincerely, this is one of the few that I believe uh, it's clearly that uh, has an important contribution. And this collaboration of someone coming from um, uh, musicology, and we typically think oh, no, that's impossible. I mean, how can uh, this person uh, do some work in uh, engineering and computational tools? And he's the proof that it's possible, and, uh, and this type of uh, uh, interdisciplinarity uh, can result in, uh, in very, very good uh, results. And, I really thank uh, Manel for accepting being part of this adventure and, uh, and this collaboration with these two departments. And uh, I think it, it shows the way that, uh, uh, that this can be done. And I hope that this can be an example for, uh, for other people to, to get into this. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Manel, would you, would you like to say that you're happy to? Um, so in a moment, we will need to, to retire to to deliberate and, and um, consider your, your fate, young sir. <laughs> That'll be <laughs> such fun. But is, is there another listener here who, who would like to raise a, a point or perhaps even a very brief query for, for our candidate? Then I think we've done due diligence on that. Let's, let's thank um, Raphael one, one further time for his, his exertions right now. Thank you. So easy. Rafael, it's, it's a 
a pleasure to have you back in the room. And we, we wish to congratulate you on the thesis that, that you've prepared. We are recommending to the university that this is awarded with the, the note of excellence. Thank you very much. The respect of quality. We, we, in our deliberations, reflected upon the journey of learning that your work represents. We, we think that's remarkable and, and oh, thank you. obviously it, it comes from a very wise choice of, of a candidate, but it, it comes from hard labor and, and from great passion for the subject. Yeah. Um, I appreciate and I, I, I think to my colleagues here, the, the, the way that you kept musical concerns at the heart of your project and so there's a sense of the technological tools being used in tandem with, with an alert musical mind and um, a care for the people with whom you worked. And I think that's a rare combination and I think it's impressive that you balance that. Well, thank you. Um, behind all of this is, is such skill in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> and musical performance, I, I suspect, too, because certainly as a as much more of an amateur myself in, in these ways, my impression is that one doesn't get good answers until one earns them. And, <laughs> and your, your Jing Kung playing or your singing of, of Lao Shen will have had to have been good enough for you to get <laughs> into the, those discussions with, with the musicians and, and for, you know, to, to engage with them as as some kind of equal, someone who they cared enough about to share the, the, the quality of, of thought that they had with you. So, so all of that is, comes before you've written a single word, and it, it's, it's impressive, genuinely impressive, and it's rare to see, I, I think, in, in, a, in a thesis, so we want to note that. Um, this is one of the best written thesis <laughs> no. I've seen, and I don't know, maybe English is your fourth or fifth language. <laughs> I, I never want to argue against you in your first language. So, so I, I want to, to thank you for, for thank that. Thank you. Too. That, that's, again, no easy feat, and um, none of us is born writing academic English. But, but you, you, you almost look like you might have been. And, uh, <laughs> That's a, a tool and an ability that will probably help you very well in, in your career ahead, whether as a, a teacher or a researcher or uh, a person working with society to, to share your results and to tease out new questions from those around you. And I, I wanted to draw attention to that. Thank you. That Many of us are good at the details, aren't we? But, but the sharing the details with the other person is, is a challenge. And you're, you're a master of that. And well, I, I think we often found sometimes but we kind of, we could accept your, your position <laughs> in moving forward. That's, that's what we need. We need more disagreement in, in, in yeah. our fields, but we need the ability to reach and overcome those, those disagreements. And I, I think you, you've shown us a great example well, of that. Thank um, you. Thank you. It's been a privilege to, to come and examine your thesis. I wish you every success for the future to come. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for your comments and, and thank you for all of you to be here. If, if you want, I would like to celebrate with you the finishing of my PhD with some uh, tapeo, uh, we call it, <laughs> uh, upstairs. So it's already uh, ready for you to go. So please come and some celebrate together. Yeah, so thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.